My first question for you is what are you waiting for? Why are you waiting to get back in control of your life? Whatever the barrier is, there's probably a reasonable solution. Maybe it involves getting some help with the logistics of decluttering, or maybe it just involves taking one step or one declutter at a time, or maybe it involves changing your mindset and getting mentally prepared for a shift. And it's about getting rid of the limiting belief that you can't do it, because the reality is you can. I know this because I chronically have been somebody who has over collected and kept things and I've really struggled with it for years, for pretty much my whole life, until recently when I found minimalism and I made some big changes. I think a lot of us find ourselves surrounded by just way too much and it's because we're socialized from when we're young to collect and to keep. So today I want to share a list of concepts that I think either if you use kind of philosophically or apply in your life could really help you live with less, especially if you're somebody like me who has struggled with downsizing your belongings. The first concept that I want to mention is that it's about having way less, not just getting rid of a bit, but getting rid of a lot. Think about the last time that you were on vacation, staying at an Airbnb or a hotel. How many belongings were in that space and how many of them did you actually use in the weekend or week that you were there? And how much nicer and more free did it feel to live in that way? Now I want you to also think of someone in your life who has a really put together home. That person that when you go over, you see their space and you just think, wow, how do they have it all together? Everything is streamlined, organized, their space looks nice and actually Take a little mental record of how much they have out. Quite often you'll be surprised at how few there are. I often think of one friend whose place is like always pristine. And I remember so often when I'd go over there, she would just be like throwing things out even while I was there. Like she'd come across something and she'd say, oh, I don't need that. And she'd throw it in the recycling or the trash. And she would just be constantly downsizing. And slowly I realized, oh, that's how her place is so organized. It's because she's constantly getting rid of things and just keeping what she actually keeps at an absolute minimum. And so sometimes in the decluttering process, it's about just being willing to take that risk, take that leap to get rid of more like 70% of your stuff rather than just the 10 to 20% that I think a lot of us do when we initially try to declutter. I think there's often that fear, what if I'll need it in the future? What if I regret getting rid of it? But I can tell you as someone who's been decluttering for more than two years now, that I have rarely regretted decluttering something. And even when I have regretted it, the cost is so low or the missing it doesn't bother me that much. And it is far more worth it to live this new lifestyle where I don't have to be constantly dealing with stuff. In the little pockets of decluttering I've done, when I just am willing to let go, when I'm willing to say, I'm gonna get rid of a high percentage of my stuff, I really see the impact it has on my life and it is worth the risk. Ultimately, the more you get rid of, the more clean, streamlined, and open your home will feel. A second tip or concept I wanna share is that once you find what works, stick with it. So what I mean is when you find an object in your life that works for you, just stick with it. Don't feel the need to rebuy it or to buy something similar or another version of it. This helps reduce future collection so that you don't rebuild up that inventory in your home. So it's kind of like when you find that perfect cozy sweater that you always wanna reach for, don't feel the need to buy something similar or to buy another cozy sweater just because you like that one. Maybe you can stick with the one that you like and just keep using it. Another example of this, I talk so often on this channel about Merit Beauty because they've been a regular sponsor of the channel. This video is not sponsored, but I'm just using them as an example of how I found a makeup brand I love that minimizes my routine, that's you know vegan, cruelty-free, all the good things, and is just very conscientious of the environment, has excellent products. I find the products that work for me and I stick to them. I don't feel like I constantly need to be buying new makeup now. Do I try something else here or there? Sure. But basically what I'm trying to say is that I feel like a lot of minimalism is just finding the products or the things in your life that you like and just being okay with sticking with them and not feeling that constant need to get more or to try new things. And I think it's just about retraining our brain to be okay 
with repetition and to realize that maybe that's actually a good thing and to notice the things you like and appreciate the objects you like and enjoy those pieces and by focusing on what you like about them and what you enjoy about them, you may feel less of that itch to get something new or to get something different. A third thing I wanna mention is that it's helpful to realize that stuff has a great way of hiding. Like I swear that belongings are sneaky. They almost feel sometimes like they have a life of their own or a mind of their own where they want to hide themselves away. They want to be kept. They are just itching to stay in the back of your storage area or to not be found again. And it's because clutter breeds clutter. The more clutter you have, the more clutter you'll find yourself gaining because once you've collected some things, it's easy to collect just a little bit more. I just think having a bit of clutter can be a slippery slope to having way too much. So when you notice that there are certain closets or shelves or areas of your home that are starting to accumulate, maybe it's time to do a mini intervention and make a change in that area. A fourth concept that has helped me live with a bit less is to accept that I will never be the coolest, most accomplished or wealthiest person. You know, there will always be somebody who is cooler than me, who's accomplished more, who has more money, no matter what I do, that's just gonna be the case. And so if we are constantly playing this sort of keeping up with the Joneses game of trying to collect more, to feel more powerful, to feel like we can connect with people or to feel like we have some kind of social capital, it's gonna eventually be a losing game where we end up spending our money on things that don't matter to us, that don't make a meaningful impact on the quality of our lives, and we're gonna lose out. Now, I say this as someone who recognizes I am privileged in a lot of ways, and this is probably easier for some people to say than for others, but I think what I'm trying to say is that accepting that there will always be people in my life or even influencers I follow or people I see within my orbit who have way more than me, have a prettier home than me or a prettier whatever than me, means that it is just a pointless game to try to compete with that. I just have to be happy with what is and try to make the most out of what I have. And ironically, I think sometimes when we actually say no to more, we end up probably giving off a kind of better energy or even a cooler vibe. Like if we choose what we love and we stick with it, like I said before, it eventually just gives off this more of a sense of perspective, if that makes sense. And I think that's actually so much more valuable than just always having the most recent trend. A fifth point I wanna make is to realize that minimalism isn't always gonna be the most fun option, but it might still be the best long-term option. I was recently watching a video of this one YouTuber who talks about creating YouTube content. Her name is Katie Steckley, I think. And I occasionally watch one of her videos. I'm not like an avid watcher, but I happened to watch this one video where she mentioned how she often gets the question, how are you so consistent on YouTube? Like, how do you post so regularly and always have new ideas? How are you constantly inspired in that way? And she basically said, I'm not. The ideas that I'm using to make videos now are ideas that I came up with weeks ago when I happened to have a day where I had a bunch of creative inspiration and a bunch of ideas, but a lot of the time I don't have those ideas. It's not like I'm constantly brimming with creativity and, and full of this constant creative inspiration and energy. She kind of said it's about making the commitment to post regularly and then sticking to it and then taking advantage of those moments when you do have some kind of creative inspiration. And what she said really resonated in that there are times when it's not fun. There are times where you get kind of bored or frustrated or you just feel like you're spinning your wheels as is the case when you declutter, when you try to pursue minimalism. There are times where it's not very appealing to have to go through a big declutter and to have to clean up a huge space full of stuff. And there are some days where you're gonna be inspired and excited to do that work, but other days where you don't feel like it and it's not that fun and you question whether it's worth it. But there will be other days where you do feel that boost of motivation or where you do notice the impact that those changes you've made in a consistent way have an impact on your everyday life. And so I think I almost want to dispel the idea that it's like always easy, always so pleasant. And if you just have the right mindset, it'll do itself. Like it is a lot of hard work and it's not always fun and you don't always have the motivation, but it's about being consistent and just sticking to a plan even when it's a little bit difficult or unpleasant. 
And the final little tidbit I wanna leave you with to think about as you try to live with less is when you're tempted to add a belonging to your life, ask yourself if it fits in with your life. And I know it's a simple concept, but I think so often we collect something just because we're attracted to it for some reason, it looks pretty, we think we might use it in the future, maybe it was recommended to us by a friend or something. But so often we forget to stop and ask ourselves, will this actually bring me joy or real regular use? Or is it just something I'm adding out of obligation, out of kind of a dream, out of a hope that it'll make me feel happier? Does it fit into that vision of myself where I do live with a lot less? Is it worth it for me to add this piece into everything else I already own? So I think just stopping and asking yourself that before you physically bring any object into your space can really slow down that flow of belongings into your home and can help you take back that control. So those were my concepts to help you live with less because they're things I've applied that have genuinely helped me make some shifts in my life and I'm still working on it, I'm still in that process, but I really feel like over the past several years I've begun to see that pay off in a meaningful way and I'm so grateful that I've made the changes I have and I wanna keep going with it. And I wanna thank all of you for keeping that motivation for me because I honestly think that having this channel and talking about it so much really helps spur me forward and catapult me into doing the declutters and making the changes that I wanna make to my life and that I wanna continue to make in my life. So if any of you have ideas around these types of concepts of how to make those changes to actually live with less, I would love to hear those ideas. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button. It's a great way to support the channel. I know I say it a lot, but truly, if you take a moment to do that, I'd really appreciate it. And you can subscribe below as well for more videos like this one. Anyway, thank you so much for spending this little bit of time with me, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.